As the release date for FNAF Ruin came closer and closer, I started to become cautiously optimistic that this DLC would actually be good. Despite hating almost everything in Security Breach, like the graphics, the story, the direction the franchise went, I couldn't help but get really excited for Ruin after seeing its initial reveal trailer back in May. The DLC seemed to be a darker, more atmospheric take on the location seen in Security Breach. The Pizzaplex is now shut down and destroyed. We take the role of a new protagonist by the name of Cassie and it is up to us to find Gregory in the Pizzaplex. Things like the improved camera mechanics and the new animatronic designs which appear to be actually somewhat scary had me genuinely excited to see if this DLC could give me something to like from Security Breach and prove to me that Steel Wool is capable of making an actual horror game, which is both fun and scary. And now here we are in July, the DLC finally released and when I played it I was truly surprised. The game opens up with Cassie arriving at a now worn down and destroyed Pizzaplex. The life of the Pizzaplex seems to be gone. No longer are we greeted with bright neon lights and an inviting location. We are instead thrown into a dark, eerily quiet building that seems to have been abandoned for years. Trash and graffiti are scattered around, indicating that this place has been out of commission for a while. Right off the bat, I immediately noticed how significantly the graphics have improved. Not only is the lighting beautiful to look at, but all of the textures make the place feel worn down and gritty. One of my biggest complaints with Security Breach is that a lot of the game lacked texture and felt very cartoony, and just not really that scary. But as soon as we load into Ruin, it is clear that this issue is no longer present. The game truly does look beautiful, and I could only imagine how it would have looked if I could run it at max settings with RTX. As we enter further into the depths of the Pizzaplex, we stumble across a flashlight and use it to continue our search for Gregory. The entire building is in Ruin which makes the rooms feel a lot more claustrophobic, with debris scattered around, heavily limiting your movement. Unlike Security Breach, which gave us access to the entire Pizzaplex as a sort of open world style game, Ruin is instead a linear experience with more scripted, cinematic moments. This was such a huge relief to me when I began my playthrough because I found the open world of Security Breach to be genuinely horrible, especially during the end of the game when you weren't even allowed to save. As a Security Breach hater, I couldn't be happier that most of the mechanics for that game are gone. We no longer have Glamrock Freddy by our side, we can't check the cameras with our watch anymore, we no longer need to charge our flashlight, and saves are automatic. These changes all streamline the game so much and allow the devs to do some genuinely cool things in this DLC. After finding a walkie-talkie that Cassie uses to talk to Gregory, we continue our path forward, going through a vent before... we fall into a now filthy, dark kitchen. After making our way through all of the trash and insects that have inhabited the kitchen, we run into a familiar face. Chica? What happened to you? You look awful. Okay, so right now I want to talk about two things. First of all, another trend you'll notice as this DLC goes on is that the animation work, especially on the animatronics, is just so amazing. The animatronics are now back to having that uncanny, twitchy type of movement, which just looks so good. Also, the other thing I wanted to talk about is the animatronic designs. Security Breach seriously failed on this part, in my opinion. None of the animatronics in Security Breach are anywhere near scary, but thankfully with this DLC, Steel will have tried very hard to fix this issue, and also gave each animatronic a charming characteristic about them which makes each of them unique. Chica's gimmick is that she is the dirty, gross animatronic. One thing I found unbelievably stupid about Security Breach was how Chica would eat pizza. I always asked myself, why would an animatronic eat food, and where would that food even be stored? But this ruined version of Chica actually plays with that idea in a really cool way. We can now see a rotten bag of trash where the food would have been presumably stored hanging out of her stomach, as well as gross food covering her entire body. It keeps Chica associated with food, but in a unique way, and it also looks really cool. This is honestly one of the coolest animatronic designs in the series. Also, Monty got a really cool makeover as well, but we'll talk about him soon. Chica remains shut down as we continue through the Pizzaplex, eventually stumbling across a Faz wrench. 
The Faz Ranch is introduced for the new hacking sections in Ruin. Now, pretty frequently throughout the game, we will be asked to hack several things. We do this by using our Faz Ranch on this panel and filling up each of the tubes. This hacking is seriously easy and feels very unnecessary most of the time, but really it's not that big of a deal and only takes a few seconds to do. Also, it is used pretty effectively later during a chase sequence. After hacking the door and going further down, we find ourselves in a dark sewer area of the pizza plex. We approach a pipe which looks like it will lead to the next area when suddenly... This seriously caught me off guard on my first playthrough. Not only is the jump scare out of nowhere, but just the idea of being flung into the water with this thing is truly horrifying. The way they have taken Monty and turned him into almost a real alligator, the way he swims around and needs to crawl, is such a cool and creepy direction to take his previously boring character. This is something we have never seen before in a FNAF game, which I really appreciate. I always like to see new takes on how animatronics can look. As the title screen fades away, we see Cassie wake up in Monty Golf. <coughs> Ow, my head. Where'd that freaky Monty thing go? I better find a way out before it comes back. We need to find our way out while also avoiding Monty at all times. The more linear level design allows the game to play with the illusion that the animatronic is always on our tail. While walking around several times we will see something fall over or Monty quickly run across the screen, and these scripted moments that can't be done with open world level design just add that extra immersion, especially on someone's first playthrough. While making our way through Monty Golf, we are greeted by... Ah! Free mask. Please take a mask, take a mask, take a mask. This is the introduction to Security Breach Ruin's brand new mechanic. Now in our arsenal is a Vanny mask, which we can equip whenever we want. This mask allows us to see the augmented reality world and lets us do things like pass through objects and locate paths that otherwise wouldn't exist. To assist us with our mask is Helpy, who installed himself into our brain so he can communicate with us, even outside the mask. <laughs> What are you still doing here? With the introduction of this mask, I think it's a good time to talk about FNAF being grounded. It was at this point that I really lost all hope that FNAF would ever go back to being how it was. As an old fan of the series who began with the very first game, I am not a huge fan of the route the series has taken with its universe. The technology in this series has progressed to a point where it is so unrealistic that I can no longer suspend my disbelief. I used to look at FNAF as a series that was meant to take place in a somewhat grounded real world. That was probably until Sister Location. But now with Security Breach ruined, this game goes all out with its technology and it seems like they have no plans to stop. It already felt extremely contrived that William Afton turned himself into a glitch in Help Wanted, but now we are literally using augmented reality to pass through objects and do even crazier stuff with it later. So yeah, if you're like me and prefer more grounded FNAF games, then this game will most likely disappoint you with that aspect. What I do appreciate though is Steel Wolf still struck a balance between the mask sections and non-mask sections. There are still many moments in this DLC, such as the intro, where the mask is not present and is taken away from the player. This allows you to actually have those scary moments in the dark where you have nothing to help you but your flashlight. And in all honesty, gameplay-wise, I have no problem with the mask either. It actually introduces some pretty cool challenges later on in the game. My only problem with it just comes down to its implications to the story and the universe of FNAF. Then again, I'm not really much into the lore like I was back in the day, so I'm interested in anyone else shares that same opinion. Using our newly found Vanny mask to navigate our way through the Pizzaplex, we stumble across our first camera station. Unlike Security Breach where we would always have a camera on our wrist, cameras are now designated to singular stations. Stations. And I honestly couldn't be happier with this change. Security Breach's cameras were horrible. Not only did they lag extremely badly and just look awful, they were also disorienting to use every single time. Every time you would move to a different part of the Pizzaplex, you would have to re-familiarize yourself with the cameras, and with the amount of time it took to use them, it just felt like a waste. 
In Security Breach Ruin, none of these issues are present. Every time you see a camera station, you know that they will be necessary to complete the section. Also on these cameras is an audio lure which we are able to use to distract the animatronics and sneak around them. I should also mention that the UI has been severely improved from the Security Breach one and is now not only easier to understand but also just looks better. Using this audio lure on the cameras, we are able to distract Monty and make our way out of Monty Gulf. After this, we approach a door with electricity. We get a call from Gregory who tells us that we need to disable the security node to get through the door. Don't stop looking for me! I need your help! Gregory! Gregory! I can hear you! If you can hear me, turn off all security! Turn it all off! Security? Security nodes! Find them and turn them all off! I can't get out until that happens! The security nodes are the backbone of this DLC's gameplay. A security node is a rabbit head you can see when you're wearing the Vanny mask, and connected to these nodes are wires, which lead to different objects we need to use our Faz wrench on. Once all wires are disabled, we can return to the bunny head and do one final hack to disable the node. I saw many people saying that these security nodes are annoying, but I honestly disagree. I think this was a good way for Ruin to open up its environments, allowing itself to not become too linear. During the node sections, we are often let free in a large open environment and are given the choice to approach disabling the wires in whatever order and way we want. Without these sections in the game, Ruin would be too linear, so having this gameplay really adds to the experience. Also while wearing our Vanny mask, we will run into the Entity, a new threat which will attack us for being in augmented reality for too long. Although I hate this guy's design and think it looks really dumb, what he adds to the overall gameplay is good. We now need to worry about avoiding threats in the real world and the AR world at the same time, which can lead to some seriously stressful moments. After avoiding Monty and the Entity while disabling the node, we unlock the electric door. Progressing through this door, we have to disable a few more nodes before ending up in another familiar location. Moving forward through the dark tunnels of the daycare, we stumble across the daycare attendant. to reboot you? With this? We are then set free and told to disable two generators. To do this, we need to make our way around the daycare and locate these computers. On this computer, we are able to do a new puzzle which involves matching objects within cameras, and doing this unlocks a new room of the Pizzaplex. After doing one of these puzzles, we can then go into this newly unlocked area and shut off the generators. After shutting off both the generators, we can then approach the daycare attendant and reboot them. I actually like that we get to see the good side of the daycare attendant in this cutscene. It's a cool contrast going from almost being killed by them to seeing how they act around children during the day. As for the gameplay in the daycare section, it really wasn't that great. I'm not sure if my game just glitched, but while I needed to disable the two generators, I was never once attacked by the daycare attendant. This made the section extremely easy and there was absolutely zero tension, which is really a shame because the open environment of the daycare could have led to some 
some really cool gameplay, but instead the daycare attendant just stands there and waits for you to reboot them. Luckily what comes next actually did have really cool gameplay. We now need to disable another node which has three wires connected to it. The only problem is a bunch of endoskeletons seen in security breach are surrounding us. What makes it worse is equipping our vanny mask to disable the nodes causes the endos to move freely, as we can no longer keep our eyes on them. This was such a cool stressful moment trying to balance the time spent in the vanny mask and time watching over the endos. After disabling that node and moving through a few more linear sections, we find ourselves in a Monte cart moving to the next area. We actually see a short cameo of the never before seen Glamrock Bonnie animatronic as we approach the location. Emerging from the tunnel, we find ourselves in the catwalk area of the pizza plex. We are now tasked once again with disabling more security nodes, all while making sure we don't slip and fall off the dangerous ledges surrounding us. Also working against us is Monty and the Entity who are both back to chase us down as we try to escape this area. Speaking of Monty, I want to talk about this game's AI because I honestly don't know how to feel about it. On one hand, I'm glad that the AI has been significantly changed from Security Breach. No longer will the animatronics teleport inches away from you for no reason. And gone are the sections where you would have to hide, hoping the animatronics would go away in time. Instead with Ruin, the animatronics seem to follow an almost linear path chasing you from one side of the area to the other. This makes the animatronics feel less threatening and more like a makeshift time limit, but at least the AI is more fair than the ones in the base game, because those ones will literally just teleport straight to you. The entity's AI is the exact same way, but luckily in moments where you need to avoid both the entity and a real animatronic, the gameplay does get a little more complex. After disabling the nodes, we are able to reactivate the gondola and escape the catwalks. We are then dropped off and need to hack a few different things before seeing Chica get taken away on a conveyor belt. Following her, we find ourselves in a new area of the Pizzaplex, which seems to be centered around Chica and her cupcakes. We once again need to disable security nodes, only this time a new mechanic is introduced to us. There are now these electric coils in different areas of the game which when activated will prevent you from putting on your vanny mask. This adds an extra step to each node section as you will now need to locate this coil and disable it before proceeding to wear your mask. This does help mix up the rather repetitive gameplay of the node sections, but really doesn't add all too much. It's really just an extra button you need to press sometimes before putting on your mask. After sneaking out of Chica's area, we find ourselves in a really trippy room. Yeah, remember what I said about the game not being grounded? Well, here you go. Anyways, in this server room, we need to match different shapes on the cameras, all while being hunted by the entity, who has now breached his way into this previously contained area. After getting through it, we find ourselves in the Roxy Raceway Salon. Here we encounter Roxy, who is now even more damaged than she was at the end of Security Breach. We've looked everywhere! He's gone! Poor Roxy. Huh? Who's there? You can't hide from me. Gregory. No! Gregory, run! Roxy's after you! Gregory, are you there? Cassie, I'm okay. I found a spot to hide. Turn off the nodes in the salon to follow Roxy. Hurry! She's close! Now set free in a large area of Roxy Raceway, we need to disable a security node containing four wires. This takes a long time, but after disabling it, we are able to make our way out of Roxy Raceway and down into the sewers, where we encounter Monty for the final time. Monty? This was a cool little section that added even more to the idea that Monty is now like a real alligator, which I thought was pretty cool, even though an animatronic swimming doesn't make a whole lot of sense. 
Progressing forward, we find ourselves once again back in the presence of Roxy, who we now need to lure using the cameras. Doing this, we are able to get her to break down several doors, allowing us to keep pushing forward, and eventually leave Roxy Raceway, although Cassie does have one last encounter with Roxy. Continuing our search for Gregory, we find ourselves in Bonnie Bowl, one of the final areas of the game. We again need to disable security nodes to progress further, while also avoiding many different threats. One of these threats is actually a new enemy, which is this horde of mini DJ music men, which I just found so funny. We need to use the provided camera station in this section to lure the music men away, all while disabling the multiple parts of the node. This was the most open area of the entire game, which felt like a nice mix-up for the gameplay which had been getting rather repetitive up to this point. We now need to disable four different wires and are able to do it in whichever order we like. There are also multiple paths to take which gives us more agency over this section. Also since this section is so open, it allows a new level of exploration to the game in the form of a secret easter egg. If you ever noticed during this review, throughout the game there are these wet floor signs scattered around the map, which we can disable using our Vanny mask. If we actually disable all of these throughout the game, and disable one final one in Bonnie Bull, a curtain opens up revealing a new room. Entering this room, we can actually see a decommissioned Glamrock Bonnie laying on the floor. This is a really cool easter egg. Glamrock Bonnie was one of the most heavily discussed things upon the release of Security Breach, so to see him now actually make an appearance in game is really cool. Also, easter eggs like this encourage you to explore every area of the Pizzaplex to the best of your ability, which adds even more replayability to the game. After finally escaping Escaping Bonnie Bowl and pushing forward, we find ourselves in Bonnie's room before suddenly falling down a long tunnel. We eventually end up next to the Princess Quest arcade machine, and the sword from the game appears to have come to the AR world. Make of that what you will, I have no idea what this means. Continuing on, we enter Phaser Blast, which just like the other locations, is in complete ruin. Making our way further and further down, we eventually stumble across Glamrock Freddy. Freddy! Freddy? Are you okay? Now, his design looks pretty ridiculous, but once again the animation work is so good in these cutscenes. We now need to outrun Glamrock Freddy, who is chasing close behind us. This chase is not really too interesting, you just need to hold shift and run forward. I wish there were more scripted sequences involved to make this actually tense, but unfortunately this part falls pretty flat. After escaping Glamrock Freddy and entering the Roxy Party Garage, we get a call from Gregory. He explains to us that we shut down all the security nodes but one. That final one being Roxy. What follows is actually a pretty sad scene where we see Cassie reluctantly shut down Roxy, who happens to be her favorite animatronic and the only one to attend her birthday. Your special day. I remember. Your special day. Do you still like carrot cake? It has been some time since I saw you last. If I remember correctly, it is on the 11th. I remember because you are number one. Twice. Have you booked your party? I'm sure your friends will show up this time. Cassie? What are you doing? Sorry. I'm so sorry. 
but all of the weight of this cutscene is completely removed later when it turns out Roxy is still alive. So yeah, this huge moment for the character didn't actually matter at all. Moving forward, we make our way down an elevator to the very depths of the pizza plex. Our flashlight goes out, forcing us to navigate through some pretty dark and eerie environments. Looking at most of the locations from Ruin side by side with Security Breach, there's really no competition. Ruin blows Security Breach out of the water when it comes to having actual creepy locations that feel like they belong in a horror game. While progressing through these dark underground areas, we actually stumble across a familiar character. I am a candy cadet. Don't get you now, I will tell you a story about a mother and a little boy who lived alone in a cabin in the dark woods. Going through the familiar rooms of the FNAF 6 pizzeria, we eventually find a computer named Mixes. We deactivate the security protocols on this computer after being asked by Gregory, which in turn eliminates the entity and opens a door for us. Now, I understand that I'm older now and no longer fit the target audience for FNAF, but seriously, this feels so cheesy for a horror game. The old designs of FNAF used to be genuinely creepy and unnerving to look at, and now one of our main antagonists for the series is this goofy looking pixelated guy. Also the way he gets sucked into the computer just feels so cheesy. I hope I'm not the only person who feels this way. Moving on, we enter the dark room, under the impression that we just located Gregory, but we we are instead met with someone else. You're not Gregory. What are you? I, I Gregory. I, I, I. Okay, now I don't read any of the FNAF books as there are just way too many to keep up with and I was under the impression that they weren't canon, but the Mimic actually turns out to be a character from one of the FNAF books. I'm really split on the decision of adding this character. The positive to this is that it reverses some of the horrible story decisions made in Security Breach. For example, William Afton coming back once again after having his perfect ending in FNAF 6 can now be explained away as the Mimic pretending to be William Afton. This downside, however, is this now sets a standard that things from the FNAF books can be brought over to the games with no explanation. This overcomplicates the game's story in my opinion, as I feel everything should be explained in the actual game. You shouldn't need external context just to understand what's going on. At this point though, the FNAF story has gotten so messy that throwing in a fan favorite character from the books was probably the best decision they can make. Anyways, after encountering the Mimic, we now have one final chase sequence with him. The real Gregory calls us on our walkie talkie and tells us to go to an elevator. After making it to this elevator and barely escaping with our lives, this happens. Gregory? No! 
This ending was out of nowhere and pretty disappointing to be honest. Instead of all of our questions from Security Breach being answered, we are instead given a cliffhanger ending which only brings up more questions. There are also two other endings we can get when going on different paths during the final chase. Running over to this cardboard cutout of Freddy, we are able to use our Vanny mask once again, and putting it on shows us this. There is also a more hidden ending which unlocks a secret room towards the end of the game. Entering this room, we see what I think is the Mimic hiding in an animatronic suit getting scooped after Cassie pushes a red button. These endings bring up so many questions and also don't really answer anything at all. Also, just like Security Breach, I'm not even sure which one of these is canon. So, did Security Breach Ruin live up to the hype? I would say yes. The majority of the fanbase seems to be overwhelmingly positive about this new release. In my opinion, it did live up to its hype gameplay-wise. While the gameplay is by no means perfect or even that complex to begin with, it is a huge step up from Security Breach's awful gameplay, which is really all I could ask for. Now, story-wise, this game really did disappoint me in many ways, but I understand a lot of that has to do with me just not really enjoying the story of Five Nights at Freddy's like I once did. It has strayed so far away from what it once was that as an old time fan I don't really see the appeal in it anymore. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the game though and if you disagree with me on anything. Anyways thank you all so much for watching until the end and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.